My name is Bob Zellner, and I'm from the United States, and I worked uh, with SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and NAACP, the National Association for Advancement of Colored People, in North Carolina. I'm from Wilson, North Carolina, and I also work with the School for Conversion in Durham, North Carolina. And we work on issues of race and sexism and homophobia and immigrant rights, all of the human rights that we have to fight for. I'm in the little guest house uh, at Eureka College in uh, Eureka, Illinois. Uh, it's the home state of both President Lincoln of the United States and President uh, Obama. And this campus where I'm speaking tonight is the alma mater of President Ronald Reagan. So I'm in the middle of conservative Midwest uh, talking about black history. Lecturing and doing media things like I'm doing with you today uh, is just a way of, um, of intensifying the effect of our grassroots work. But um, the moral movement that's now sweeping the country is a continuation of the struggle of Martin Luther King and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, which I was a part of. Uh, it, it's a 50 to 100 year struggle that we're undertaking. And what I'm doing in North Carolina is very similar to what I did in the Deep South 50 years ago. And so I was recently arrested, and it was the 18th time that I've been arrested. I've been arrested 18 times uh, because of my human rights work. And I went to jail in Raleigh, North Carolina, with 17 other people. And within one year, over 1,000 people went to jail. So it's just like 50 years ago when black students sat in at the lunch counters and it began a civil rights and human rights revolution 50 or 60 years ago. What we've done in our Moral Mondays movement in the United States, the new civil rights movement, the new human rights movement that is now gripping our country and will uh, be our history for the next quarter of a century, that movement has now seen that all of these issues are related in such a way that you can't work on one without working on all of them. So what the uh, ruling class has always done is to try to keep people who are working on climate separate from people who are working on race, from people who are working on education, from people who are working on jobs. Now we're putting that all together and the ruling class is trembling. 100,000 people at one time, the largest demonstration in the history of the civil rights movement, occurred just last February in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it wasn't covered by the United States media because they're controlled by the capitalists and the 1%. See, there's a general uh, human rights movement in the United States of thousands, hundreds of thousands, of millions of people. But because the right wing has been so successful in concentrating wealth beyond all measure, we slowly developed uh, or uh, regressed from some form of democracy to um, an autocracy uh, of wealth. And it's worldwide now. Um, and that's one of the things that's bringing uh, human rights workers around the world together. So in the United States now, they're, um, through the Moral Mondays movement or the Moral movement, uh, the Occupy movement, the I Can't Breathe, uh, the, the um, war on black young people, all of these things are coming together under the leadership of Dr. Barber and a few other national leaders it's coming to a point where we're beginning to take back some power. Maybe the biggest successes was um, taking uh, these weapons that, uh, that 
the ruling class wants to use. In other words, the ruling class would like for all decisions to be made by white people who are male, who are property owners, and wealthy. So um, I think that the biggest uh, success that in my 50 years of activism or more has been to take those weapons that they use to accomplish that and to, um, to take them away from our enemies. And one of those great weapons was racism because they would never be able to come to power in the United States unless they got a lot of white working people and poor people and especially white Southerners like me to vote for their program which immediately injures them economically. So people in the United States have agreed with a non-socialist program or a capitalist program that injures them because uh, they value their race so highly. Why, what's so important about race? Well, the reason the ruling class makes it so important is that people will impoverish themselves and they will injure the, their own economic uh, well-being in the name of race and homophobia and anti-immigrant and anti-women. So all of those things are something that a person concerned about human rights has to battle. One of the main things that's different between <clears throat> the struggle now and uh, in the civil rights movement 50 years ago is that there's a a lot more uh, a media. There's a lot uh, more instant communication. There are 20, there's a 24-hour news cycle, all of these things, and yet there's less communication than we had 50 years ago. Because 50 years ago, we had to get together for multi-day meetings. We got to know each other personally. We sat and drank coffee or beer together. Um, so now... All of this media gives us instant communication. But when I talk to people in the United States, do they know about the 42 students who uh, were missing in Mexico and were killed? They don't know about it. So how is it possible to have all of this information and yet be so unfocused that you're not paying attention to um, what's happening in the United States? Most people don't know that Hundreds and thousands of people are demonstrating in the Deep South now, 60% of them white Southerners for the human rights program, and they don't know about it because it's not covered by media. It's not covered, I don't know what they're doing on their social media, but they're not, uh, they're not paying enough attention. One of the reasons that I'm involved in this is that Number one, I came from the South. Uh, my father was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. My grandfather was in the Klan. They were racist. They not only were racist, they were uh, fundamentalist Christians. And since they were in the Ku Klux Klan that bombs churches and kills little girls, they were also terrorists. So coming from that background, I have a responsibility as a white American to fight against basic things that harm people. Part of what you can learn is that um, if you make a, an attempt, uh, if you feel that it's important to make an, an attempt, you can change the programming that you have been given. When I grew up in the South, my programming was that I lived in an all-white world. Uh, uh, I went from first grade all the way th uh, until through college. I graduated college without ever attending a class with a person of a different color. So that was supposed to program me to be only interested in white people, to be only interested in making money and taking care of myself and my, my own people. So uh, I was very blessed because I had people who told me, you don't have to live a segregated life. You don't have to be a racist. You can be a human a person. And uh, my father also quit the Ku Klux Klan. His, his own father, my grandfather, disowned him. His brothers never spoke to him again in his whole life. 
My grandfather said that if I would march in Birmingham, Alabama, he would shoot me. He would kill me on the street. So I think uh, what people can learn from my experience is that no matter where you come from, no matter how backward you might be, no matter how looked down upon, you can overcome anything in your life if you want to. And some people want to do good for the major uh, group of people, for, for the most people, and some people only want to do good for themselves. So it's up to you to choose. And my life, if it means anything, means that you can choose something other than you started out with. People are still afraid of uh, taking a stand. They're afraid of using certain words. We're not supposed to say ruling class. We're not supposed to talk about socialism. Heaven forbid anybody should mention communism because uh, the political spectrum in the United States, because of the superpower of the right wing, has uh, demonized even the word liberal. So a lot of liberals don't even want to be known as liberals. So... Uh, Part of the uh, liberation struggle is to have people have a little bit more courage. Uh, would you spend your whole life working for people to get more power and money for people who already have more power and money than they can use? Or would you spend your life working for poor people, for uh, the downtrodden, uh, for people who are oppressed? I think we should work for the oppressed. And, uh, and not be worried about the consequences. I've survived for 75 years, uh, or at least 50 years in the movement. They haven't killed me yet. They killed some of us, but the rest of us keep going. If someone falls, we pick up the banner and keep going.